All right, let me give you some background. Half-Life 1 comes out on November 19th, 1998, and everybody loves it. Sometime after that, Valve had Gearbox make an expansion to Half-Life 1, and exactly one year later, we got Half-Life Opposing Force. And on June 12th and November 14th of 2001, we got Half-Life Blue Shift and Half-Life Decay, respectively. And I think there was like a demo or something released on the 12th of February, 1999, but nobody cares about a stupid demo, and it wasn't even made by Gearbox. Back to Blue Shift, Gearbox Software thought it would be cool to include some HD models to bring the weapons and NPCs up to 2001 standards, which apparently is this. If that wasn't bad enough, Valve thought it would be an epic gamer prank to not only include them in Half-Life 1, but to make them enabled by default, at least on the Steam version. And those HD models are what we're going to be talking about. Personally, I don't like the HD models if that wasn't obvious enough, and some YouTubers share that same sentiment. And at least they don't force you to play with those abhorrent so-called HD models from Blue Shift. Which I still can't believe that some people think is superior to the base models. But I wanted to know what people's thoughts were, so I went on Reddit and I made a post asking what the community thought about the HD models, and I let it sit for a few days. I also asked Radiation Hazard, a larger Half-Life YouTuber who you should really check out because his content is really fucking good. Now I asked him because I figured a Half-Life expert may be able to give me more insight than what your average player might. <laughs> Okay, so here we are a few days later, now let's check the responses that I got. But before we do that, let's check out what my friend and radiation hazard had to say about the HD models. My friend said that he likes them, he thinks that they fit the aesthetic, and they make sense in reality. Now, to summarize what radiation hazard said, he said that they look great in-game with a higher polygon count, much more detailed than their low-detailed counterparts, especially the character models, but they look out of place on maps. So basically, his grievance is context. To give a visual example, Look at this screenshot that I took in Gary's mod. You have the low texture resolution combined with filtering to make it look blurry for the brushes and whatnot, but there are also higher polygon count NPCs and a V-model of the AK-47 from CSGO. Now, imagine if instead of the scientist NPCs with civilian heads in a metro comp, there was the scientist and security guard from Black Mesa, the remake of Half-Life 1, and replaced the AK with the Black Mesa MP5. Now you kinda see what he's talking about. Unless I completely missed what he was trying to get across to me, then uh... Why don't we uh, check the Reddit responses? Okay, so the general consensus seems to be people who like them think it fits the aesthetic, they like the character models, prefer the weapon changes, and think that it makes sense in real life, and that people who don't like them don't think they fit the aesthetic and the weapon changes aren't necessary. Now remember this list as it will be important later. So what are my thoughts on the HD models? Well, to start, I have to agree with what Moman535 said, the shotgun sounds badass and it looks a lot better. The rocket launcher also looks great, staying relatively faithful to the original and just having better textures. The best change in my opinion is the hand grenade. It actually, you know, looks like a grenade and not a fat sphere with a grid texture on it. Weapons like the Tau Cannon, Gluon Gun, and pretty much every weapon in Category 5, except the grenade, look pretty much the same. Except the Snark, which when you throw it, it has like a yellow patch on it, but the view model looks identical. Weapons that I don't like are the Beretta, Colt Anaconda, and the M16. The Beretta is a significant step down in terms of animation, with the shooting animation just being awful, and the reload animation doesn't even have a visible magazine go into the gun. So that's a 0 out of 10 for me. The M16 is meh, the reload animation is fine, but I mean, at least Gearbox did take the time to change the sounds for the gun, and they even made the grenade fired from the underbarreled launcher look pretty good, so props to them for that. The revolver is also meh, changing from a Colt Python to an Anaconda, according to the wiki. Pretty much nothing about the weapon has changed at all, which I mean isn't bad, but like at least with the rocket launcher, it's the exact same weapon. But with the Anaconda, they changed the model, but they didn't even bother to change the animation. So, I don't understand that. But hey, at least the bullets don't look like sharpened pencils, so I guess that's great. 
This entire time I've been talking about the weapons, but as you know, the HD models also include NPCs as well. Now let's start with the good. Zombie head crabs look fucking amazing. The gore is phenomenal and it really makes them look a lot scarier. I would even go as far as to say that they look good as the zombies from Half-Life 2. I didn't notice a change with the head crabs, hound eyes, or the alien controllers. The alien grunts and bull squids are like barely different. That's like a C plus at best. The HECU look 20 times better than the original. The gas mask visor and all that stuff are actually modeled and they're not some 144p texture that's blurred to hell. The female assassins haven't changed at all, and I know that because they still have the fat sphere grenades on their belt, glocks with silencers, and the knife breasts. Now on to the friendly NPCs. This is where it all kind of falls apart for me. Let's start with the scientists. They look ridiculous, and I despise them. Like, what is this supposed to be? This is this is a bit too cartoony for me to take them seriously, and it makes me want to not help them escape from Black Mesa and turn them over to the ATCU for looking so dumb. Especially the Einsteins. They also didn't even bother to change Walter's glasses. Sven Co-op was able to do this, and that came out in 1999, two years before the HD models even existed in Blue Shift, which came out in 2001, like we've already said. And the worst offender of this is the security guard. He went from looking like he hasn't gotten enough sleep to looking like a literal man baby, and his stupid helmet doesn't help either. I think that's it for the models. Uh, I don't remember the Apache or Osprey looking any different, and you only see them like, what, two or three times in the game? And the tanks are brushes anyway, so they wouldn't even be affected by a model change. Anyways, now that you know my thoughts and whatnot, let's go back to that list. I want to give my opinion on that, so let's talk about some of these points. The HGD models make sense in reality. You don't want to go down that route. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train- This fast 12 ejects shells immediately after firing, when in real life they eject shells whenever you pump it, if you aren't firing in semi-automatic. Also, spas 12s don't have a second barrel. Also, also, the Beretta ejects shells from outside of the gun. Teleportation doesn't exist and probably won't. Zen. Aliens. Urinalysis or radiation. G-Man. The military wouldn't use a 50 round box magazine and a fully automatic rifle. That's why light machine guns exist. The gluon gun or tau cannon do not exist, nor do snarks. That's three sins for you. This isn't everything unrealistic about Half-Life, but it does show that realism isn't that important if it comes at the cost of fun. So here is 10 sins to cover my bases. I think that this realism argument stems from the fact that the MP5 has a grenade launcher, and MP5s don't have grenade launchers in real life. Except they do, and they're actually the only SMGs that have a grenade launcher, and even if they didn't, the M16 isn't even the standard issue United States military rifle. That would be the M4 and M4A1, which have been replacing the M16 for a while now. Also, the Beretta M9 doesn't make any sense because the United States law enforcement use Glocks, and if you couldn't tell, the security guards aren't exactly in the military. And if they were, they wouldn't use a Beretta, they would use an M17, which was made by Sig Sauer. So, your realism argument doesn't really work here. But like I said in my CinemaSins parody, realism isn't the point of Half-Life. The HD models fit the aesthetic. I'm gonna have to side with the radiation hazard on this one, they just look really out of place and don't feel right. As for people preferring the weapon changes, if that's your preference, then, you know, that's your preference. If you genuinely like the HD models, and more power to you. But, I don't like them, and I thought it'd be cool to make a video explaining my point of view, and getting other people's opinion on them. I do encourage discussion in the comments about this, and I am curious to hear what you all think and why or why not you may like the HD models, but for the love of god, keep it civil, because the last thing I want is a flame war in the comments like this is a 2016 commentary channel video.